Hi, uh, my name is Brian and this is another installment in installing my aquarium. And um, as you can see, I have a steel aquarium stand that's about 41 inches tall and it's designed to support my 3,000 gallon aquarium. This is completed. There are some other videos uh, that you can watch. Uh, they're in my playlists and in videos about me on my channel. So today's video is about waterproofing this wall. This is the second part in this. And so I've already got a couple of coats of paint on this. And what I'm using is um, Bare Porch and Patio Paint. This is their 6050 Bright White. It's a nice, great white color. A couple reasons, uh, or in case you haven't seen the other videos. So what I've done is I've put Hardy Backer, which is a cement board product, up against the wall that the aquarium stand is going to go up against. And the reason for this is I didn't want to do drywall because drywall can get wet and it can mold and mildew and rot out, all of which are unpleasant. So if I put a cement board and I cover it with a one part epoxy uh, or acrylic enamel, it essentially becomes a waterproof indestructible wall. Now I'm not expecting to splash a lot of water on this wall, but I still want the peace of mind of knowing that if a hose gets loose or you know, I drop something and it splashes, you know, a quart of water out of my sump. I want to know that it's not going to destroy the wall. And so that's what I'm doing. And so this is going to be the third coat of paint that goes on this wall. I don't expect this video to be very exciting, but I wanted to share with you what I'm doing so that it can help you with your aquarium or your fish room. Because the same thing applies to a fish room and the beginning of my fish room is right here. So, you know, the aquarium is going to come to here and then there's going to be a closet in this space, a three foot by three foot closet that I'm going to put my giant protein skimmer. I've got another series of videos on the giant protein skimmer um, and I know a lot of you have seen that, so that's awesome. And, and if you want to keep up with my videos, the easiest thing to do is to subscribe. The next best thing you can do for me is to like my videos because that'll help other people find them too. So. Um, I'm using a metal roller pan with a plastic tray liner. This is a Wooster six inch uh, roller. I like these because they waste less paint. And um, as a bonus, it's made in America. I, I strongly encourage you to buy local. So if you are watching this from another country, buy something that's made in your country. Support your local economy. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on some seven, seven mil nitrile gloves that I get from Harbor Freight. Normally two coats of this is enough, but I'm seeing some print that's bleeding through from um, the uh, cement board, so I'm going to go ahead and just put another coat on here. This is also something that's going to be really difficult to repaint in the future, and so I want to make sure I have a good thick buildup of paint here. Now, you know, one thing that I do, and other, other people are different, but I do not wash out my rollers. I actually just throw them away when I'm done painting. And the reason is, is that, you know, it's, it's actually time consuming to clean the things out. And I just don't think I get that good a performance out of them the second or more time that I use them. So I just, you know, I use them, I do my project, and it's just, a, it's a consumable, and it's just a cost of, of doing business, as one of my professors used to say. So one of the things I try to do is never to put paint back in the bucket. And the reason is it just tends to start the curing process and <coughs> inside the bucket. A little bit of dust in here. So at this point, I'm done. The only thing I've got to do is um, pull this off and throw all of this away. So the way I do this, and this is one of the reasons I wear gloves, is I just grab the roller and away it goes. And then I have paint all over my gloves. So what I do is I take the better of the two and just peel off the glove and then I peel off the other glove. And 
I actually switched to a second set of gloves. Um, you know, if I had some place to wash my hands, it would be easier, but this house is still only in the rough-in stage, and we haven't uh, finished the, the plumbing, so, and I don't want the paint in my pool. So if it's just dirt, I rinse my hands in the pool. But in this case, uh, it's paint. I don't want paint in my pool. So I'm just going to pick all this up and run it to the trash can. So at this point, I have finished putting this third coat of paint on the wall. I'm going to let that dry. When I come back tomorrow, I'll film another segment on installing the aquarium. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the aquarium stand into place. And then I'm going to sink anchors into the floor. Now, you might be asking yourself, gosh, Brian, this is a 3,000 pound aquarium. Where do you think it's going? Well, that's a great question. And um, honestly, I hope the answer is nowhere. And that's why I'm going to anchor it. I don't want to take the chance that somebody might fall and push on the aquarium and, or something catastrophic could happen. I don't know. You know, it looks pretty sturdy to me, but I'm still going to anchor it down because that's the right thing to do. And, um, you know, some future segments on this is going to be framing in the area above the aquarium, framing in the little closet that goes next to the aquarium, putting in all the equipment, building new sumps to go under the aquarium. Yep, new sumps. It's going to be interesting because I've not done under tank sumps before. I really don't like them. Um, but at this house, I have to. And of course, I have a wonderful drain line because I, I thought ahead. You have no idea how much work it takes to put a drain line someplace where it's not. Um, we actually cut a slot in the floor and excavated some dirt, installed the plumbing, tied it in when we redid the bathroom over there, and then um, tied rebar into the existing slab and poured a new, uh, new concrete here. Um, it's a fabulous amount of work, but it's awesome. And for those of you that have big tanks, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Go big, do it right, or go home.